Stuyvesant High School from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. HTTP colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org. Stuyvesant High School, commonly Sty, is a public high school in New York City that specializes in math and science. It is one of several specialized schools run by the New York City Department of Education. The school opened in 1904 on Manhattan's east side, and it only admitted boys for 65 years. Since 1969, Stuyvesant has been a co-educational school, and after moving to its Battery Park City building, the facilities for girls were put on a par with those for boys. Admission to Stuyvesant is by competitive examination and is open to all residents of New York City with no tuition fee. The school is noted for its famous alumni, its academics, and the large number of its graduates attending prestigious universities. There has been a friendly, long-standing rivalry between Stuyvesant and the Bronx High School of Science over students' awards from the Intel Science Talent Search, with both schools claiming dominance at various times. Classes were in session at Stuyvesant when a terrorist attack destroyed the nearby World Trade Center towers, and the school building served as a command post for several weeks afterwards. The school was temporarily relocated and shared facilities with Brooklyn Technical High School until it could return to its own building. The special issue of the Stuyvesant Spectator on the tragedy was reprinted in the New York Times. Stuyvesant High School routinely engages well-known cultural, academic, and political figures to speak at its annual commencement ceremonies. Former U.S. President Bill Clinton addressed the class of 2002. United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan addressed the class of 2004. And late-night talk show host Conan O'Brien addressed the class of 2006. History Stuyvesant High School is named after Peter Stuyvesant the last Dutch governor of New Netherland before the ownership of the colony was transferred to England in 1664. The school was established in 1904 as a manual training school for boys, hosting 155 students and 12 teachers. In 1907, it moved from its original location at 225 East 23rd Street to 345 East 15th Street, where it remained for the following 85 years. Its reputation for excellence in math and science continued to grow, and enrollment was restricted based on previous scholastic achievement starting in 1919. The school went on a double session plan in 1919 to accommodate the rising number of students. The practice allowed double use of classroom space, with some students attending in the morning and others in the afternoon and early evening. All students still studied a full set of courses. Double sessions would run until 1956. In the 1930s, entrance examinations were implemented, making admission to the school even more competitive. During the 1950s, the building underwent a $2 million renovation to update its classrooms, shops, libraries, and cafeterias. In 1969, 14 girls enrolled at Stuyvesant, marking the school's first co-educational year. Now, approximately 43% of students are female. In 1957, a team of 50 students began construction of a cyclotron, a project sponsored by the physics department. By 1962, a low-power test of the device succeeded. Matt Deming, class of 62, remembered that a later attempt at full-power operation tanked the electrical system for the building and surrounding area. According to Abraham Baumel, Stuyvesant principal from 1983 to 1994, I can tell you with certainty that the cyclotron never worked at Stuyvesant any more than it did for Ernest Lawrence, and he was awarded a Nobel Prize for his invention of the cyclotron. The Russians never succeeded in getting one to work either. In 1972, Brooklyn Tech, Bronx Science, Stuyvesant, and Fiorello H. LaGuardia High School of Music and Art and Performing Arts were chosen by the New York State Legislature as specialized high schools of New York City. The act called for a uniform exam to be administered for admission to Brooklyn Tech, Bronx Science, and Stuyvesant High School. The exam, named the Specialized High School's Admissions Test, or SHSAT, tested students in math and science. Admission to LaGuardia High School was by audition rather than examination, in keeping with its artistic mission. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, at least four Stuyvesant teachers died from AIDS. 
In 1992, a new waterfront building was constructed to house the high school. Stuyvesant is a quarter mile, approximately 400 meters, from the former site of the World Trade Center, which was destroyed on September 11, 2001. The school was evacuated during the ordeal, and the students were temporarily relocated to Brooklyn Tech starting September 21st, while the Stuyvesant building was used as one of several bases of operations by rescue and recovery workers. This caused serious congestion at Brooklyn Tech and required the students to go to school in two shifts. Normal classes resumed three weeks later on October 9th. Because of Stuyvesant's close proximity to Ground Zero, some were initially concerned about the possibility of asbestos exposure to Stuyvesant. Indeed, the Stuyvesant High School Parents Association has contested that the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's initial suggestion that the area was safe is not accurate. However, the EPA indicated at the time that Stuyvesant was safe from asbestos. Some problems have been reported, including respiratory problems of former teacher Mark Bodenheimer, who accepted a transfer to the Bronx High School of Science after having difficulty continuing his work at Stuyvesant. Other isolated cases similar to Bodenheimer's case have been reported. Nonetheless, there is no definite evidence that such cases relate to Stuyvesant at all and current exposure to asbestos at Stuyvesant is improbable. Alumni who were killed during the September 11th attack on the World Trade Center include Daniel D. Bergstein, class of 1980, Alan Wayne Friedlander, class of 1967, Marina R. Gertzberg, class of 1993, Aaron J. Horwitz, class of 1994, David S. Lee, class of 1982, Arnold A. Lim, class of 1990, Gregory D. Richards, class of 1988, Morita Tam, class of 1997, and Michael Warchola, class of 1968. Richard Ben Veniste, class of 1960, was on the 9-11 Commission. On October 2, 2001, the school paper, The Spectator, included a special full-color 9-11 insert containing student photos, reflections, and stories. The insert was reprinted in the November 20, 2001 issue of the New York Times. In the months after 9-11, Annie Toms, an English teacher at Stuyvesant, a 1993 alumna, and the theater advisor at the time, suggested that the students take accounts of staff and students' reactions during and after 9-11 and turn them into a series of monologues. Toms then published these monologues as, With Their Eyes, September 11th, the view from a high school at Ground Zero. Alexander Epstein of the Stuyvesant Standard, an independent newspaper serving the school's community, contributed the section Out of the Blue to the book At Ground Zero, young reporters who were there tell their stories. In the early 2000s, Gary He, class of 2002, started the now defunct Stynet.com, a website where students could rate their teachers. Although he later shut down the evaluation section after mathematics teacher Bruce Winokur threatened a libel suit. Words left on the website read, Teacher evaluations is currently down but will soon be back better than ever. The vox populi must be heard. When Stuyvesant's official website crashed on September 11, 2001, and during the days right after, Gary He's website was the only online source of information and moral support for the distraught Stuyvesant community. Stynet.com now lives under its new alias, Stycom.net. During the 2003-2004 school year, Stuyvesant celebrated the 100th anniversary of its founding with a full year of activities. Events included a parade from the 15th Street building to the Chamber Street one, a meeting of the National Consortium for Specialized Secondary Schools of Mathematics, Science, and Technology, an all-class reunion, and visits and speeches from notable alumni. United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan spoke at the graduation of Stuyvesant's class of 2004. Enrollment. Stuyvesant has a total enrollment of about 3,200 and is open to all residents of New York City entering 9th or 10th grade. Enrollment is based solely on performance on the Specialized High School Admission Test. The test was formerly known as the Specialized Science High School Admission Test because the three schools that originally used it were all science-oriented. These original three schools were Stuyvesant, 
Bronx Science, and Brooklyn Tech. The list of schools using the SHSAT has since grown to include all of New York's specialized schools except for Fiorello H. LaGuardia High School of Music and Art and Performing Arts, where entry is by audition rather than examination. Since its relocation to its Battery Park City campus, the test score necessary for admission to Stuyvesant has been higher than needed for admission to the other schools using the test. Admission is currently based on an individual's score on the examination and his or her pre-submitted ranking of Stuyvesant among the other specialized schools. Each year, about 22,000 of New York City's 90,000 eighth graders sit for the test, and only approximately 800 highest scoring applicants are admitted to their first choice school. Ninth and rising 10th graders are also eligible to take the test for enrollment, though far fewer students are admitted this way. Those who score in the second highest score bracket are offered admission to their second choice school, while those who score in the third highest bracket are offered admission to their third choice school. According to Article 12 of the New York Education Law, admissions to the Bronx High School of Science, Stuyvesant High School, and Brooklyn Technical High School shall be solely and exclusively by taking a competitive, objective, and scholastic achievement examination, which shall be open to each and every child in the City of New York. The current admission policy is available from the New York City Department of Education. According to the Department of Education, Stuyvesant accepts students solely based on their performance on the SHSAT, although former Mayor John Lindsay and community activist group ACORN have argued that the exam may be biased against African and Hispanic Americans. Stuyvesant has contributed to the education of several Nobel laureates, winners of the Fields Medal and the Wolf Prize, and a host of other accomplished alumni. It consistently leads the nation in the number of national merit scholarships awarded and regularly trades off the leading position in the number of Intel Science Talent Search semi-finalists and finalists with Bronx Science. Stuyvesant sends nearly all of its students off to four-year universities, and around 15% go on to the Ivy League. Stuyvesant graduates have an average SAT score of about 1,400, 685 verbal, 723 math. Recently, there were two students who achieved perfect scores on their SAT-1 and SAT-2 tests, an unusual accomplishment. Stuyvesant also was the high school with the highest number of advanced placement exams taken and also the highest number of students reaching mastery level. School facilities. By the 1980s, the East 15th Street Building was no longer a quality educational facility by modern standards, and the number of students had also increased to several thousand and could not be accommodated by the five-story building. The New York City Board of Education secured an agreement with the Battery Park City Authority for a new building, and construction began in 1989. The new 10-floor building, located near Lower Manhattan's financial district, was constructed at a cost of about $148 million and included 65 classrooms with about 450 computers on 13 networks, seven pairs of escalators, various indoor sporting facilities, including two gymnasiums and a pool built to public schools athletic league standards, a theater with acoustics and lighting to accommodate music and drama productions, two lecture halls with movable partitions, a skylit cafeteria overlooking the Hudson River, 12 science laboratories, including a molecular biology lab and an analytical chemistry lab, and special shops for instruction in ceramics, photography, wood, plastics, metalwork, robotics, and energy studies. One room in the Stuyvesant building, called the Museum Room, was built as a replica of a room from the 15th Street Stuyvesant building, with desks, chairs, a table, and blackboard brought from there, as well as paint and flooring in its style. The room is dedicated to teacher Dr. A. Edward Stefanacci, who died in 1993. The school's library has a capacity of 40,000 volumes and overlooks Battery Park City. The New York City Department of Education reports that public per student spending at Stuyvesant is slightly lower than the city average. However, Stuyvesant also receives some private contributions. Shortly after the new building was completed, 
The $10 million Tribeca Bridge was built to allow students to enter the building without having to cross the busy West Street. The new building is one of the five additional sites of P721M, a school for older, aged 15 to 21, students with multiple disabilities and mental retardation. Wheelchair-bound students can sometimes be seen throughout the building. Some teachers remark on the unusual juxtaposition of the gifted with the disabled. Glass boxes set into various places in the building's wall hold mementos from the year of each graduating class. Items displayed include water from most large rivers, mud from the Dead Sea, a Revolutionary War button, pieces of the 15th Street Stuyvesant building and of monuments around the world, and various chemical compounds. In 1997, the mathematics wing was dedicated to Dr. Richard Rothenberg, the math department chairman before his death from a sudden heart attack in 1997. The Rothenberg Memorial, commissioned in his honor, is a wall made up of 50 of these boxes, each featuring a concept in mathematics. Academics. Stuyvesant students undergo a college preparatory curriculum including four years of English, history, and a laboratory-based science, three years of math, though most students opt to take four years, and a foreign language, a semester of each of introductory art, music, health, computer science, and two lab-based technology courses, although there are several exemptions by which students may be excused from technology education in their senior years. Stuyvesant offers a broad selection of elective courses. Some of the most unusual offerings include robotics, physics of music, astronomy, and the mathematics of financial markets. Most students take calculus, and the school offers math courses through differential equations and linear algebra. A year of technical drawing used to be required. Students learned how to draft by hand in its first semester and how to draft using a computer, CAD, in the second. Now, students take a one semester class called Technology Graphic Communications, equivalent to the former year of drafting, and a semester of introductory computer science in order to introduce the mainly science-oriented students to computer programming early in their careers. A variety of advanced placement courses, 31 are available at Stuyvesant, offer students the chance to earn college credits. A few students earn enough college credit to start college as sophomores. In 2004, Stuyvesant began complying with the Department of Education regulations mandating that advanced placement courses be weighted by a factor of 1.1 in grade point averages. However, this caused widespread outcry among students, faculty, and teachers and in 2005, Stuyvesant was granted special permission to revert the weight of AP courses back to one. Computer science enthusiasts can take two additional computer programming courses after the completion of advanced placement computer science, systems level programming and computer graphics. There is also a two-year computer networking sequence, which can earn students Cisco Certified Network Associate certification. Stuyvesant's foreign language offerings rival those of many colleges, including the basics like French and Spanish, as well as German, Latin, Hebrew, Japanese, and Italian. In 2000, Mandarin Chinese and Korean for native speakers were introduced in response to Stuyvesant's burgeoning Asian American population. Courses are also offered in Arabic and Greek, but these courses, along with Korean, may only be taken as electives. Stuyvesant's Biology and Geoscience Department offers courses in Molecular Genetics, Molecular Biology, Molecular Science, Human Physiology, Medical Ethics, Medical and Veterinary Diagnosis, Human Disease, Anthropology and Sociobiology, Vertebrate Zoology, Laboratory Techniques, Medical Human Genetics, Botany, and Psychology. The Chemistry and Physics Department offers Organic Chemistry, physical chemistry, astronomy, engineering mechanics, and electronics. Although primarily known for its strength in math and science, Stuyvesant is also home to a robust music program and offers students 10 music groups, ranging from a symphony orchestra and jazz ensemble to a chamber choir. Comprehensive programs in the humanities offer students courses in British and classical literature, philosophy, existentialism, debate, acting, journalism, and a host of creative writing and poetry classes. 
The history core requires a year of ancient, European, and American history, as well as a semester of economics and government. Humanities electives include American foreign policy, civil and criminal law, Jewish history, prejudice and persecution, race, ethnicity, and gender issues, small business management, and Wall Street. Stuyvesant has recently entered into an agreement with the City College of New York in which the college funds advanced after-school courses that are taken for college credit but taught by Stuyvesant teachers. Some of these courses include physical chemistry, linear algebra, advanced Euclidean geometry, and women's history. Grade point averages at Stuyvesant are calculated to two decimal places. Some argue that the distinction is overly fine and encourages excessive grade competition, while others use the theory of significant digits to argue that they are irrelevant. Nevertheless, the practice continues. The practice is not entirely unprecedented. In calculations for honors and other designations, the University of Chicago calculates grade point averages to four decimal places. Extracurricular activities. Sports. Stuyvesant fields 26 varsity teams, including a swimming team, as well as golf, bowling, volleyball, soccer, basketball, gymnastics, wrestling, fencing, baseball, softball, handball, tennis, track, cross country, cricket, and football teams. In addition, Stuyvesant club teams include boys varsity and junior varsity and girls varsity ultimate teams. The Stuyvesant track and field team have been public school athletic league cross country city champions in 2004 and 2005. The Stuyvesant swimming team, the Pirates, have been PSAL city champions consecutively since 2000 and Opens champions since 1995. The Stuyvesant bowling team has been the PSAL Manhattan Borough champion consecutively since 1990. The girls soccer team, the Mimbas, brought home the city championship title in 2001, 2004, and 2005, despite a severe lack of practice space and a lack of a home field. Unlike most American high schools, every sports team at Stuyvesant has its own name, like the Peaches, softball, the Ballers, boys soccer, the Penguins, girls swimming, the Phoenix, girls basketball, and the Mimbas, girls soccer. These names tend to change with time and lend each Stuyvesant team a unique flavor. In 2000, Stuyvesant added a varsity ice hockey team, the first public school in New York City to do so. The team was run by students without administrative assistance for several years. There is also an annual alumni game, where notable Stuyvesant alumni hockey players such as Tim Robbins and Len Berman often appear. The team has been in first place in its 18 Chelsea Peers League every year, though it often plays teams from outside the league. Stuyvesant is also a powerhouse in fencing, with a string of city championships from 1986 through 1989. Stuyvesant does not, however, have a football field, baseball field, or tennis court, though the new building does have a pool. Clubs. Stuyvesant offers clubs, publications, teams, and other opportunities under a system similar to that of many colleges. It hosts over 200 clubs, ranging from Potty Rings, a club dedicated to Harry Potter and the Lord of the Rings, to Pink Lemon, a Japanese rock culture club, to help the helpless, dedicated to community service, and the robotics team, which competes in the international first robotics competition. The speech and debate team is nationally recognized and arguably one of Stuyvesant's most successful teams, with a 25-plus year history of winning national championship tournaments on both individual and team levels. Other debating clubs include the Junior State of America, a political debate club, and Model United Nations. The Stuyvesant Theatre community puts on three student-run productions a year, a fall musical, a winter drama, and a spring comedy, as well as a one-act festival and several smaller studio productions. Publications. Stuyvesant hosts 25 publications, including many departmental magazines. The Spectator. The Spectator is Stuyvesant's official school newspaper. It contains 11 sections, news, features, op-ed, arts and entertainment, sports, photography, art, layout, copy, business, and web. The departments are each headed by at least two editors, all of whom encompass the editorial board of the paper. 
The editorial board meets daily in the Spectator Journalism class and is headed by the editor-in-chief and managing editor. At the beginning of their term, the editor-in-chief and the managing editor select four editors to be members of the managing board, a group that advises the editor-in-chief and managing editor on matters relating to the paper. There are over 250 total staff members who help to produce the bi-weekly publication. The Spectator is independent from the school, but it remains the prime news source for students, teachers, and administrators. The Spectator, founded in 1915, is one of Stuyvesant's oldest publications. It has a long-standing connection with its older namesake, Columbia University's Columbia Daily Spectator, and it has been recognized by the Columbia University Graduate School of Journalism's Columbia Scholastic Press Association on several occasions, most recently in 2002. The Stuyvesant Standard. Founded in 2001, the Stuyvesant Standard is a bi-weekly independent newspaper published by Stuyvesant students for the community in and around the school. It covers news at school, city, state, national, and international levels, contains interest sections such as business, science, literary, and puzzle, leisure. Alongside the standard departments of opinions, sports, and arts and entertainment. Always a laboratory for innovative columns, its current columns include Meet This Teacher, The Critical Lens, A Space on Students' Opinions, Sports Beat, and Tomorrow's Technology Today. The standard is distributed within Stuyvesant and throughout the surrounding community. Despite its youth, the standard is now one of the largest organizations at Stuyvesant. Its alumni remain close to the current staff and are very active in the paper. Other publications. Caliper, Stuyvesant's biannual literary magazine. Caliper is one of the oldest high school literary publications in the nation and along with monthly open mic sessions helps the Stuyvesant literary community flourish in an environment focusing on math and science. Indicator, the Stuyvesant Yearbook. Math Survey, the annual math department publication. Many of Stuyvesant's notable mathematicians were first published in Math Survey. The 1948 edition is available online. Political Fire, an unofficial newspaper started in 2006, which deals solely with political issues. The Broken Escalator, a now defunct humor publication, which has not been printed since 2005. Academic Teams. Stuyvesant's academic teams include speech and debate, quiz bowl, chess, science olympiad, and math, which regularly compete successfully at major regional, national, and, at least in the case of the math team, international tournament. A first robotics team, called Stypulse, was founded in 2000 and has since won the New York City Regional, 2003, and the New York Chairman's Award, 2005. Stuyvesant also has a Model United Nations team, a Junior State of America chapter, and a Model Congress team, which competes at regional colleges. Sing. The annual theater competition known as Sing pits seniors, juniors, and soft frosh, freshmen and sophomores working together, against each other in a race to put on the best performance. Started in 1947 at Midwood High School in Brooklyn, Sing is a tradition at many New York City high schools. At Stuyvesant, Sing started as a small event in 1972 and has grown to a huge school-wide event. In 2005, nearly 1,000 students participated. The entire production is written, produced, and funded by students. Their involvement ranges from cast, chorus, Irish jig, step, Bollywood dance, Latin dance, and tech crews. Sing begins in late November and culminates with its final performances on three nights in March and April. The show sells out on all three nights, raising over $30,000 for Stuyvesant's clubs and pubs via the student union budget. Student body. For most of the 20th century, the student body at Stuyvesant was heavily Jewish. However, Asian students began a significant influx in the 1970s. As of 2005, the student body was approximately 51% Asian and 38% Caucasian, with blacks and Hispanics each constituting roughly 4% of the population apiece. Russian and Indian students are well represented, and Jews continue to comprise a large portion of the student body. Stuyvesant possesses a disproportionate amount of historical minorities in comparison to national and local population distribution. 
See also the demographics of New York City. Although Stuyvesant students must reside in New York City, there is a long-standing belief that some students reside in New Jersey or Long Island in contravention of New York City law. Racial profile. Jeffrey Hart wrote for the Dartmouth Review, when I went to Stuyvesant in 1944, it was about 85% Jewish. Today, it is about half Asian. Yon Hee Kim called it an Asian-dominated school. When asked at a college information session whether Asians could claim minority status on college applications, college advisor Carol Katz answered, look to your right, look to your left. Asians are not a minority. New York City Department of Education statistics reveal that as of 2005, the student population was approximately 51% Asian and 38% Caucasian, with blacks and Hispanics each constituting roughly 3% of the population. Russian and Indian students are well represented, and Jews continue to maintain a strong presence. About 30% of the incoming freshman class are immigrants to the United States, while 20% are first-generation Americans. As of 2005, the most common countries of origin of immigrant students were China, Russia, and Bangladesh. Controversy. Accusations of bias in admissions tests. The school's off-center demographic profile and relative paucity of black and Hispanic students have been a source of consternation for some city administrators. John Lindsay, mayor of New York City from 1966 to 1973, argued that the test was culturally biased against black and Hispanic students and sought to implement an affirmative action program. At the protest of parents, however, the plan was scrapped and led to the passage of Article 12, stating that admissions would continue to be by examination only. Despite this, however, a small number of students judged to be economically disadvantaged and who came within a few points of the cutoff score may be given an extra chance to pass the test. In 1996, community activist group ACORN published two reports called Secret Apartheid and Secret Apartheid II, calling the SHSAT permanently suspect and a product of institutional racism, and claiming that black and Hispanic students did not have access to proper test preparation materials. Along with school's chancellor, Rudy Crew, they began an initiative for more diversity in New York's gifted and specialized schools, in particular demanding that since only a few districts send the majority of Stuyvesant's and Bronx Sciences students, that the SHSAT be suspended altogether until the Board of Education can show that the students of each middle school in the system have had access to curricula and instruction that would prepare them for this test regardless of their color or economic status. Jesse Shapiro, Stuyvesant valedictorian, and Mika C. Lasher, then a sophomore, published several editorials in response, and the outcome was averted. Self-segregation. In the early 2000s, Ling Wu Kong, class of 2001, published several articles in The Spectator, the school's paper, bemoaning an apparent lack of interaction between the different ethnic groups at Stuyvesant, while a junior echoed his claim, saying, each group owns a location. On the sixth floor is the Asian clique. The fifth floor is blacks and Hispanics. Whites hang out on the second and fourth floors and outside at the wall. Most students prefer to socialize within their own ethnic groups. And like many ethnically diverse colleges and universities in the U.S., Stuyvesant has developed into a salad bowl, with different sections of the Stuyvesant building being implicitly reserved for members of particular ethnic groups. A series of spectator editorials titled Race at Stye have also attempted to tackle the subject. An Asian Students Association and a Black Students League exist, although a 2000 request for a White Students League was denied, with administration claiming the name was racist. Student Profile As it is a public school, Stuyvesant students attend tuition-free. Although poor students abound, the dominant social group is upper middle class, split largely between the white Manhattanites, the Brooklynite Jews, a few African Americans, and Asians from Queens. Stuyvesant is like most high schools in that many pay attention to fashion. Perennial favorites for girls include flares, either denim or nylon, while the boys' preferences are more fickle, 
running from Jinkos during the mid-1990s to smaller jeans and North Face jackets in the later 1990s. Beat-up sneakers a la Moby and brightly colored clothing are popular among Stye's Manhattan raver contingent, while a few clad themselves in black gothic apparel. Fishnet stockings and thigh-high boots are not uncommon. Stuyvesant has no dress code, save the physical education department, which allows students to wear shorts and t-shirts of their choice. Notable people. Main article. List of Stuyvesant High School people. Stuyvesant has produced a steady stream of professional mathematicians, including more leading figures in the field than are associated with most leading universities. A number of leading physicists and chemists are also Stuyvesant alumni, as well as several well-known entertainers and authors, including Charlie's Angels star Lucy Liu and the Shawshank Redemption star Tim Robbins. Stuyvesant alumni include four Nobel laureates. Joshua Lederberg, class of 1941, 1958 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. Robert Fogel, class of 1944, 1993 Nobel Memorial Prize in Economics. Roald Hoffman, class of 1954, 1981 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Richard Axel, class of 1963, 2004 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. Author Frank McCourt taught English at Stuyvesant before the publication of his novels Angela's Ashes, Tis, and Teacher Man. Teacher Man's third section, titled Coming Alive in Room 205, is all about McCourt's time at Stuyvesant and mentions a number of students and faculty. In Pop Culture the Stuyvesant High School building in Battery Park City was one of the main settings for the film Hackers, although it was not mentioned by name. As in the film, Stuyvesant has no pool on the roof, despite a long history of seniors selling rooftop pool passes to new freshmen. It does, however, have extra floors on the roof where utilities are housed. In an episode of Law & Order Criminal Intent, a female Stuyvesant student is murdered. The investigation leads Detectives Gorin and Eames to the school, where they interview her classmates. The 2004 Tribeca Film Festival featured an ad campaign with a stylized depiction of the school entitled, Fast Times at Stuyvesant High. Also, the entrance to the high school is visible in the Beastie Boys music video for the song, Cha Check It Out, as seen in the beginning of the video, where the three rappers are walking down the Tribeca Bridge. One of the members of the Beastie Boys in the Fight for Your Right to Party music video is wearing a boys' red Stuyvesant High School physical education leader t-shirt. This has occasionally sparked a rumor that one or all of the boys attended Stuyvesant. They did not. However, Kate Schellenbach, the band's original drummer, did. Stuyvesant has been chronicled in popular literature based in New York City. The Jonathan Latham novels, Motherless Brooklyn and Fortress of Solitude, are prominent examples of this trend. Actress Amanda Bynes, as Holly, attends Stuyvesant in the primetime television show What I Like About You. A documentary, entitled The Ticket, is currently being filmed about the student union elections at Stuyvesant. Alec Klein, class of 85, a reporter for the Washington Post, is currently researching a book which strives to explain what sets Stuyvesant apart from other high schools. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl.html.